In this video, we'll take a look at how LLM knowledge can be extended and updated by retrieving information from external sources. This is what's typically referred to as Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG, and it often relies on concepts such as semantic search and vector databases. So together we'll take a look at what all of these terms mean and how they can be used in practice to create an effective Retrieval Augmented Generation system. LLM's knowledge is stored in their parameters or weights. This so-called parametric knowledge is learned during training, where the values of the parameters are tuned based on the training data. This poses a challenge, as the knowledge of the LLM cuts off at the moment of training. For instance, let's take the hypothetical discovery of a new planet in our solar system. When asked about planets, the LLM would not be able to give accurate information about this newfound planet that was not present in its training data. Similarly, if a user seeks information on a highly specialized or proprietary topic, the LLM will fail, offering limited or imprecise information. The core issue is that parametric knowledge is static in nature. The values of the parameters are frozen after training, and thus the LLM's knowledge cannot change. Updating or extending this parametric knowledge isn't straightforward either. State-of-the-art models have billions or even trillions of parameters, and retraining them every time this new information is expensive, resource-intensive, and requires collecting a large amount of additional training data. Moreover, another challenge is that parametric knowledge cannot easily point to the sources of its information, making it prone to hallucinations. This means that when an LLM provides an answer, it's often difficult to trace back to where or how it learned that information. This can lead to scenarios where the LLM confidently provides incorrect or misleading answers, as it generates responses based on patterns it learned during training rather than verifiable facts or updated information. A solution to the limitations of static knowledge in LLMs lies in their ability to learn from context without additional training. To illustrate, when an LLM is given a text excerpt and a subsequent question related to that text, it can often generate accurate responses. The key limitation to be aware of is the size of the context window. Most text sources are too long to fit into the limited context window of the model, which is still at most just a few thousand tokens. Even models like GPT-4 Turbo and Claude 2.1, which boost context windows of up to 200,000 tokens, have limitations. This capacity might accommodate, for instance, the entire content of a medium-sized novel or a small set of academic papers. However, even this extended window may not be sufficient to include all the possible additional knowledge we want the LLM to access. Moreover, as the amount of text approaches the upper bounds of their context windows, the efficiency in retaining and referencing earlier parts of the text diminishes, leading to potential inaccuracies or omissions in the generated content. Instead, we want to be able to select smaller passages relevant to the query and only feed those into the context window. This is where retrieval augmented generation comes into play. In a RAG system, an indexing module breaks down documents into smaller pieces or chunks, which are then stored in a database. When you ask a question, a retriever calculates the similarity between your query and the text chunks in the database, fetching the most relevant pieces of information. It then instructs the LLM to answer your query using those pieces of information. Maintaining and updating this database with new information is both cost-effective and less complex than continuously retraining the LLM. Furthermore, RAG diminishes the likelihood of hallucinations, inaccurate or fabricated responses, by enabling the system to reference the origins of its information. 
For instance, if the database contains the latest scientific research, the LLM can accurately answer queries in this domain, citing the relevant studies or findings as its sources. As we've seen, in a RAG system, we have a retriever whose job is to go into the database and find the most relevant text chunks that the LLM can use to answer the query. However, how do we identify these text chunks given all of the data present in the database? A simple approach would be to search for keywords in the query and match them to text chunks in the database. However, this approach often falls short. Keywords alone may not grasp the full semantic meaning of a query. For example, consider a query like, what are the consequences of global warming on polar habitats? And the relevant passage that discusses the impact of rising temperatures on Arctic ecosystems. Despite the absence of direct keyword overlap, the passage is clearly pertinent to the query. This example highlights the limitation of keyword searches, as they might overlook contextually relevant information that doesn't share exact keywords, but is semantically connected to the query. A solution to the limitations of keyword search is semantic search. Now, semantic search is based on the concept of sentence similarity. Essentially, given two sentences, we want to determine how similar they are in meaning, even if they do not share any direct keyword. Sentence similarity models convert input text into fixed size embeddings. These are vectors that capture semantic information and can be used to calculate how close or similar two given sentences are. The idea is that similar and related sentences will end up closer in the embedding space, while dissimilar sentences will be far apart. Examples of such embedding models include OpenAI Ada2 and the open source models BGE. When using semantic search in a RAG system, our knowledge database would be a vector store. We divide the corpus of text into chunks, and we then use the embedding model to generate vectors which are stored in the database. When a query comes in, we calculate the embedding vector of that query, and then we look for vectors in the database that are similar or close to the vector generated by the query. In practice, this means calculating the distance between vectors using measures such as cosine similarity or Euclidean distance. To close this episode, we're going to quickly jump into a collab notebook to see a RAG system in practice. Here, we first install some of the packages that we need, such as uh, Langchain, OpenAI, and ChromaDB, and then we do some imports from those packages. Because we're using GPT 3.5 Turbo for inference, we also need to set the OpenAI API key. Incidentally, if you want to use an open source LLM for this, uh, I recommend to use something like Llama 2, which actually works really well for retrieval augmented uh, generation systems. So what is it that we are going to build? We are going to take a data set which contains transcripts from the Uberman Lab podcast. This is a very famous health and fitness podcast. I actually follow it uh, myself. And here we have a data set with 20 such uh, episodes. So let's download all of this and extract it. And we can take a quick look at this. So you can see the 20 episodes. Each episode has a, or is contained in a text file. And if we open it, the structure is pretty simple. You can see that at the beginning of the file, we have a YouTube URL. This is where the episode comes from. Now we've got the title and the full transcript. So it's going to be quite easy to parse this into a long chain document, which is going to be our next step. 
So long chain documents from the uh, documentation here, they essentially have two attributes, the page content, which is the actual content of the document, and then a set of meta data that we can decide ourselves. Uh, incidentally, this is the JavaScript documentation for Langchain. We're using Python, but uh, the objects have got the same properties. So how are we going to populate this? Essentially, we iterate through all of the files in this directory, and then we process the file and process text file extracts the URL and the title, which are going to be, as we said, the meta data. And then it extracts everything after the word transcript, which is the actual content and puts it inside the page content attribute. So here you can see for each of these files, it returns a document populating with the page content and the metadata. So we can keep track of where that document comes from uh, and the title of the document. Obviously we could add any other metadata that we wanted here. If we run this, we will end up with 20 such uh, documents. And we can take a look at the metadata of the first document. So you can see the source link and the title of the document. And then we can also take a look at the first uh, 200 characters of the uh, document. Now, the next step, if you recall, is to take all the documents and to split them into smaller chunks that can then fit into the context window when we try to answer any question. For this, we're going to use the recursive character text splitter from Langchain, and we're going to configure it to split our documents in chunks of 700 tokens. And we are also going to configure an overlap of 200 tokens. Now, this is necessary here because we are blindly splitting a stream of text. And so we're very likely to split mid sentence and that particular token might not make any sense on its own. So we want tokens to essentially overlap a little bit. So we retain some of that context. Let's go ahead and do this by passing the document to the text splitter. And we end up with 4,581 chunks. And for example, we can take a look at the first chunk here, second chunk or second chunk would be this one and, and so on. So we're now ready to take these chunks and embed them with an embedding model and store them in a vector database so that later on we can perform semantic search. The embedding model we're going to use is called BG embeddings. And this is one of the best performing embedding models, at least in the open source space. Hugging Face actually has a leaderboard for embedding models. And you can see that BG uh, embeddings score or rank uh, to the top. But you can also appreciate if you scroll down just how many embedding models uh, do exist uh, and are scored here. I think there is more than a hundred models. So to use the embeddings, I've just got this snippet here, which essentially imports the package, selects the base English embedding that we want to use. We have to set normalize embeddings to true because we're going to use cosine similarity to compare the uh, embeddings. And then we simply instantiate the BG embeddings object here. And we need to make sure to put this on the GPU. So the embedding model is quite small. You can see here is probably, um, I think a gigabyte or so. And now we can take ChromaDB and pass it all of the chunks that we've got and the BG embedding model. And what this is going to do, it's going to take a while. It's going to go through all of the chunks, perform the embedding, and then store those chunks in the database. I leave this running for a couple of minutes and then we'll get back. 
So this is now completed and we can carry on and create a retriever from this vector store. You will see that we are specifying k equals five. This is the number of documents that we want the retriever to fetch back from the database when we provide it a query. And we can see how this works in practice. So we have the get relevant documents method. We can pass a query and what this is going to do, it's going to embed that query and then using cosine similarity, it's gonna go in and retrieve the top five documents. Let's see how this works. So indeed, it returns five documents and we can take a look at the chunks that have been returned from the database. So if we take a look at the first chunk, the page content says something about the, actually, if we look at the metadata, it says something about find your temperature minimum to the fit, the jet lag. This is the title of the podcast. And then there is something here that says, but everyone should know their temperature minimum. Your temperature minimum does not require a thermometer and so on. So obviously this is a very relevant chunk to our query. The second chunk starts here. Sorry, the second chunk starts here. I want to repeat that your temperature minimum tends to fall yatta yatta yatta. So this seems to be working fine. Now, obviously what we want to do with this, we wanna wrap it inside a full rag chain so that we can ask a question and the LLM can see the chunks and answer our question. So that's how we can do it with long chain. First of all, we are gonna fetch a standard prompt for RAG. This looks more complicated than what it is in practice. This prompt template is essentially going to implement what you see here. So it's going to have something that tells the LLM to answer the question with the provided chunks, and then it's going to provide the question. We'll actually take a look at that in a second. Uh, then we obviously instantiate uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo and we set the temperature to zero. We typically want the temperature to be zero whenever we're doing a uh, RAG task uh, because we don't want the LLM to be creative. So what does our chain look like? Here I'm using Langchain expression language, which is a very intuitive way of creating uh, chains. So the first thing that I pass to the chain is an object which contains the context, which comes from the retriever. So it's going to contain essentially the chunks and I pass this through the format document. So what this function does, it takes all of the page contents and concatenates them together by adding new lines after each of them. So essentially we are literally going to get the individual chunks concatenated together. And then we set the question. Uh, the question is going to be whatever we pass here to invoke. After we have this, all of this is fed into the prompt and then it's fed into the LLM and then the string output parser will just extract a string um, out of that. So if we prepare this chain, what I want to show you is what the standard prompt for RAG looks like. Let's take a look at the template. You are an assistant for question answering tasks. Use the following pieces of retrieved context to answer the question. If you don't know the answer, just say you don't know. Use three sentences maximum and keep the answer concise. Then it's got the question and then it's got a placeholder for the question, which you can see is one of the input variables. And then it's got the uh, context here and it's got the placeholder for the context. So what this syntax essentially does, we are creating this object, which is going to contain the context and the question. And then the prompt is gonna populate this 
um, placeholders with the question and the context. So we are essentially recreating this. The only difference is that the question comes before the context in this prompt, but if we wanted, we could switch it around and actually we could provide a custom context. So all of these fits into the LLM and then we get a string parsed out of that chain. So let's try to ask the question, what is the temperature minimum? So the chain runs and pretty soon we should hopefully get a short, concise, meaningful answer, which we get. The temperature minimum is the point in every 24 hour cycle when your temperature is the lowest, it tends to fall 90 minutes to two hours before your average waking time. So that works really, really well. Uh, we could ask other questions. Um, for example, let's see this one over here. What are some good ways to increase motivation? And again, this should find relevant chunks from the embedded content uh, and then try to answer these. Some good ways to increase motivation include raising your heart rate through activities like sprinting or cycling and then practicing calming the mind while in this heightened state of activation. I'm not really sure this is that relevant actually. Um, but let's say I want to know why the LLM is giving me this answer. Well, I can look at the sources that it is um, using. And that's one of the advantages of RAG. So to do that, I can take our pipeline and extend it a little bit. So first of all, I have a RAG chain from docs, which is essentially the same as what we've seen here. And this is gonna end up in the answer of the second chain. So let me just run this and I have a different question here, but we will uh, switch it later with the previous question because I am really curious to see where it is getting this information from. So what happens with this more complex chain is that you can see that there is an answer and this is the answer to the question we are asking. And that's essentially the same that we had before, but we are also adding a documents retrieval. So here we are basically taking all of the chunks that have been returned and extracting the metadata and returning it with the answer to our query so that we can see exactly which chunks from which episodes were used to answer the query that we asked. So in this case, we asked what apigenin is and apigenin is a compound that acts as an estrogen inhibitor and can increase the enzymes associated with GABA. It derives from chamomile and has sedative-like effects. Now, let us ask the question here and see what it is using to give us that particular, that particular answer. So you can see that it is taking this answer on motivation from uh, this episode with tools for managing stress and anxiety, um, and then supercharging exercise, performance, recover and recover with cooling. So probably uh, this is a little bit biased towards uh, energy and motivation for, for exercise. Uh, but anyway, that's the advantage of RAG, that we can now also check where that information comes from and also reduce hallucinations.